to all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Go. Preach this. is Trifosa, and I am 12 years old. Trifosa lives in Nyaragusu with over 68,000 other Congolese refugees. For them, there literally is no hope of returning back to the Congo. But Trifosa has found another hope, a much better hope. I like Awana. I like to learn about the Word of God. And I like to play the games. I like to memorize the Word of God because it gives me hope. And I also like to dance. Psalm 56, verse 8. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. I have my hope in Jesus.
sin, that you'll overcome the wicked one by the word of your testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Yesterday, my testimony is yesterday, February the 8th, 1987, I was lost and undone, and I met the Lord Jesus and uh, changed my life forever. You know, I used to be uh, a lot of things. I used to be wicked. But, uh, you know, uh, in the Word of God, I brought my Bible with me to the choir. I never do that. I want you to know this is the most precious thing to me in the world. And that's the Word of God. saving me and what he's done in my life. He's worthy to be praised. I thank him for this word. My life verse is this, Galatians 2 20. For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave his son for me. And I will say this, persuaded with Brother Paul. I love to read Paul's writing. For he said I was the chief of all sins. And sometimes I look at myself where I've been and I think I am the chief of all sins. But I'm with Brother Paul I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present, things to come, height nor depth can never separate me from the love of God which is in Christ my Lord, I'm in good company in this book, for I am a sinner. And I like that, what that old boy said when he slapped himself up on his chin. Didn't even look into heaven because he wanted to be reverent to the Lord. He said, God be merciful unto me. I just ask you, if you're here today, here it is, the second month, February the 9th, 2020. If you're here in your life, You'll never regret it. For God so loved the world that he gave us all to God. I love my Bible. I don't even want nobody to lay anything on my Bible. Preacher, give us that book to read. You know, I carry the church up there. I just can't hardly lay nothing on it. It's so precious. But I will tell you this. When I hold this Bible, I'm holding my Lord. For he said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this is the Don't mess with my life.
There's no other words to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears. See, I've had more gains than losses, and I've known more joy than hurt. As his grace fell down upon me, undeserved, God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. For God has been my father, my savior, and my friend. His love is my beginning. And his love will be my end. I could spend forever trying to tell you all he is. But the best way that I can say it is this. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. God's been good. In my life, I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. Looking back and I can see I've cried some bitter tears, but I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears. See, I've had more gains than losses. I've known more joy than hurt as his grace fell down upon me undeserved. God's been good in my life. Beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. Looking back and I can see I've cried some bitter tears, but I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears. See, I've had more gains than losses. I've known more joy than hurt as his grace fell down upon me undeserved. God's been good. I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God.
God's been good. For God has been my Father, my Savior, and my friend. His love is my beginning, and His love will be my end. I could spend forever trying to tell you all He But the best way that I can say it is this. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good, God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. to you today. Amen. Y'all just stand together and fellowship with the choirs. They come down. Amen. Okay, so before I sing, I actually want to say something that I never do. But this song, um, the lyrics just really speak to me a lot because it talks about like you're in a place where you need God and He'll come to you no matter where you're at. And there's so many times in our life when we get there and we just don't think anybody can reach us, but God can reach us. And this week it's been really hard because the devil's trying not to. He doesn't want me to sing this song. God's sake, it's not, even, it's not that bad, but it really upset me. <laughs> I really didn't mean to sing this song. So. You are not good enough to 
There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. But you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true i will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless i'll be your shelter i'll be your armor I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. Stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true, I will rescue you. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper. Night, it's true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true. I will rescue. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. How many of you believe he will rescue you? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad he knows where we are. I'm glad he knows what we need, and I just praise God for his goodness. I just want to thank him this morning. How many have been blessed this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. I just bless the good name of the Lord. I want to say God is good. Amen. Uh, and he knows where we are and what we need. And I'm glad this morning uh, we serve a God who is always, always near. Uh, he is our rescuer. Uh, he knows where we are this morning. Look at somebody and just say he knows where you are. Amen. Uh, he knows exactly where we are and what is going on in our life. And I just want to praise him. Uh, give God glory this morning for his wonderful blessings in our life. Uh, and uh, we have been watching uh, for the last a uh, little bit as we have uh, been going through uh, the series of I Will. I've been watching people who are I Willers. Amen. Just people serving, saying, yes, I will. I will sing. I will do something for the Lord. Hey, you know what we ought to be? I just want to do something for him. Amen. Brother Jerry gave a testimony just a minute ago. Why would I want to do something for Jesus? Because he's done everything for me. Amen. Amen. And I, as, a, as a child of God, uh, listen, you can't pay for your salvation. Uh, we, can't, uh, we can't say, Lord, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to bring some money. This is what I'm going to do. I can't work to earn it or to keep it, but I can serve him because of it. Amen. Uh, and uh, just to love him with all of our heart uh, and to praise him and to honor the good name of the Lord. I'm glad this morning just to be saved. 
I do not have to question what this is all about. <laughs> I got saved whenever I was 17 years old, and God said, you're in the family now. Just enjoy it. Amen? I live for him. Lift him up. Uh, listen, if you're saved and you know Jesus, I want to tell you, it changes everything. Amen? We just want to give God praise. I want to invite you to take your Bibles and turn to uh, Matthew chapter number 20. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 20, uh, we're going to primarily stay uh, right there in in chapter number 24, uh, just a few minutes this morning as we look at the Word of God. We are uh, covering chapter 4 of our series of I Will. Uh, when I look at what God is saying to us, it's not I could because sometimes we think, wow, I could do that uh, and it would do this in my life. Or, you know, some, I might just think, yes, uh, that's, that's something that would help me, so I might do that one day. I always thought that about trusting Jesus as Savior and Lord. I thought, well, I might get saved one day. I knew what it was. I knew about it uh, because I've been raised in church. But I want to tell you, I might will take you straight to hell. And as a believer, I might will keep you from ever doing what you need to do. Amen? And then I, I can, I know that I can do that, but I have not done it yet. Y'all do know how that in a lot of stuff we are procrastinators. How many have ever had your engine light to come on in your car? If you have, would you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. How many of you, the second that it turned on, you run to the garage? I mean, you didn't go anywhere else. You didn't go to work. You didn't go home. You went straight. As soon as that thing flashed on, uh, you went to the East Burke uh, Auto. Amen. And you said, hey, my light is on. You know what? It was at least a day, and if you and if you are a lady, if you're a lady, would you say amen? And you told your husband your light was on. It was at least a month. Can I have amen right there? So I can. I know I can, and I know sometimes I should. There's stuff I know I should do in my life. I know I should be in the Word. I know I should be praying. I know that I should. I do a lot. I know that I, there's a part of me in my life. I know I could serve. There's something I do. I can do. I should do that. But what about making that should become I will? We're watching as we have seen over the last a couple of weeks about how, how to serve that I will serve. So I want to ask you something, and uh, this is not something that we need to answer out loud, but in our lives, uh, what does it look like to serve Jesus through the church? I want to say again, as we talked about the church uh, back in the summer, the church is the body of Christ. We are saved. Uh, we're put in the body of Christ. Amen? But as a saved person, the church, the local body, is where we serve God through. It is bringing us together. God speaks to us. God calls us together. And then God gives us that opportunity in service. So what does that look like? Am, am I an I will serve person? Look at somebody. You don't have to answer, but look at them and say, are you? Are you an I will serve person? person when we look at what God is doing and serving the Lord Jesus I taught us by the life he lived how to serve so guess what I want to be an intentional follower of Jesus how many of you know today that it is uh, that there's stuff that happens to you that are just naturally you naturally do them you have done it uh, since you were uh, since you were born it's just things in life that are natural well as a believer the Holy Spirit comes in life and so guess what we have a new spiritual nature and we should be following and there's things about following Jesus that should be our spiritual nature we should uh, we should be telling people about Jesus Amen? Uh, last night, I pulled up. Uh, it, it was a little bit late. I pulled up to a, a drive through window, uh, and I handed the girl uh, uh, the money. She handed me my change, and I said, here, I want to give you one of my cards. Y'all know what that is, don't you? It is a You Matter card. And she said, oh, thank you. She said, you gave me one of these the last time you came through. <laughs> Amen. I want the whole wall to be full of them. Amen. 
You know why? Because people matter. It should be our nature to engage people in who Jesus is and calling them to a life that is real. So our idea of joyous life has, seems to be when everything is like we want it to be. But can I let you know something? Everything's not always going to be like we want it to be. That joyous life, if we are if we are waiting for everything to line up how like it should so that we can have joy, we will never experience real joy. Real joy comes from serving Christ and following Christ and being a servant of the Lord and honoring Him in what we do, focusing on the life that God intended us to have. So my want I will take me to the place of self-serving, and it becomes that place in my life uh, that it takes me to uh, being a selfish person here's what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 35 are y'all ready for this he said it is more blessed to do what to give than to do what to receive so it's blessed I'm going to be blessed as I give of my life as I serve a Christ and so why in the world, in our life, so, so many times we get to the place where we want to be served rather than serving? So I will serve. We've looked at changing our perspective on how focusing on who Christ is and what Christ did in our life and challenging ourselves to become who God said, celebrating Jesus. I want to tell you something this morning. We've been celebrating him, Amen. And you look at how honoring him and worshiping him, connecting to grow, and then how this morning committing to be an I will person. The thought about this comes to my mind. What would Jesus do? How many of you remember that? There were books out, there were bracelets out, there's T-shirts out, there's hats out that say WWJD. Y'all remember that? If you remember that, would you say praise the Lord? What would Jesus do? I want to look at in, Acts, in Matthew chapter number 20 and verse number 20 and see what Jesus would do. The Bible says in verse number 20, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons. What was she doing? Look at it. What's the next two words? Worshiping him. How the Bible says she was worshiping. How many of you believe you should worship God? Amen. Then the Bible said, and she was desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, of the one on the right side, on the right hand, and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But listen to what Jesus said. But Jesus answered and said unto her, You know not what you ask. She, he said, I want you to know something. You don't know how, what you are asking. He said, uh, but in verse number 22, he said, uh, you know not what you ask. Are you able to, uh, to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, we are able. Wow. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I, have, I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. And it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Then look in verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. How many of you believe that the disciples got mad. How many of you believe today that disciples were, were real people? Y'all believe that? Amen. They were upset. But listen what Jesus answered in verse at number 25. But Jesus called <coughs> unto them him and said, You know uh, that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they uh, that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your, what? 
your minister, your servant, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Wow, Jesus looks at this woman, which is James and John's mother, and he begins to explain to her why this will not work. Let's think about what he's talking about for just a minute. She said, I want you to grant me something. How many of you have ever asked the Lord for anything? Would you say amen or raise your hand? You ever asked the Lord for something, amen? Guess what? We're supposed to. We're supposed to ask him everything. Would you agree with that? The Bible said to be praying always. How the Bible lets us know that you never cease to pray. He said, ask him to me. He, he said, I'll give it to you. Here's what he said in the book of Isaiah, he said, in the book of Jeremiah, calling to me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How many of you believe we should pray? Amen. And so we are watching as this woman asks, hey, God, would you grant me something? Would you hey, give me something? So when we think about what would Jesus do, what is the first thing that comes to your mind about serving, about being hey, faithful, about being a person who will serve the Lord? I will be that person. I will, and I will person seems to be hey, in that place that it is very costly. You ever thought about serving Jesus that it may cost you something? Brother Jerry quoted a scripture just a few minutes ago how that we are, we're living in him. It has cost us our life. How that it, that it also, how did you know living for Jesus can cost you relationships? Did you know being a Christian and letting your Christian values be known, may, it may cost you some kind of friendship, some kind of business. It may cost you all kind of things in life. But I want to ask you something. Is it worth it? When you watch what Jesus is saying to these disciples, he is saying to them, I want you to know something about serving me and following me. It may not always be fun in your life. Matter of fact, it may be to the place where it's a sacrifice to serve. Jesus did not ever leave his disciples in the place of thinking that everything in their life is going to always be a great. Matter of fact, he says it in these verses of Scripture. He leads them to that place of making a choice in their life. Wow, he said, and we watch as she said, grant me. The Bible lets us know something. Uh, first of all, in verse number 20, that she came worshiping him. Should we worship him? Wow, we're watching as she is uh, worshiping. Uh, James and John's mother has come uh, to Jesus, and she brings her two sons uh, with her. Uh, she came Worshiping. The word worship, we looked at it a week before last. It means to adore. It means to reverence. It is a place of us giving ourselves to God. It is loving Him so much that we, He is our master. And we want to honor Him. We want to love Him. And we know that we can confide in everything that He is. It is us giving ourselves. So this mother, she is truly adoring Jesus. Oh, and what has happened to her son? I want to say the greatest thing you ever face as a parent, the greatest experience you ever have as a parent is seeing your children serve God. Yes, they may, they may, they may dunk the ball. Yes, they may run the touchdown. Yes, they may have all of these other, uh, they may be the winner uh, of the wrestling match. They might be uh, the one who can taekwondo somebody. But can I let you know something? The greatest thing you ever have is people serving God. Oh, and it is in our life. That is one of the, one of the vacant spaces sometimes where we put most effort into is getting him to the place of God. But this woman, she is just saying, Jesus, I want to worship you for who that you are. I want to worship and honor your name. And in worshiping, she had a certain object. That word certain that is found there. She had an object in her life that she is desiring from Jesus. Wow. I'm amazed when I read this uh, scripture because it lets us know that word certain. It means a specific uh, thing. The desire is something that she is asking. It is to require the word desire that's found in the scripture there is the word uh, to beg. And so uh, she came worshiping with a request. 
Wow. Not just worship to be worshiping, but she worshiped so she can try to get a request answered. You ever thought about in our life how easy it is for us to look at Jesus like some kind of Santa Claus? Like, well, well, yeah, Jesus, if I just go to church and I sing in the choir, and uh, then everything I ask you're going to give me because you're the present giver. Sometimes our worshiping, she was worshiping Jesus. I never condemned her for her worship. She never, he never condemned her even for what she asked. But sometimes I think as a, as a believer, as those who have trusted Jesus, sometimes we think if we do just enough good stuff or just enough things, that it will make Jesus answer our prayers. You say, preacher, I have no clue what you're talking about. We get guilty of that. It's like, well, I haven't been to church, so he hadn't answered my prayer. Well, I, have not, I hadn't done this, and I hadn't done that in my life, so now i got to do these things in order to get his attention. Can I just let you know what gets God's attention? When we love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our might, with everything that we have, and we're just simply faithful to what he has, and we realize that in worshiping, whatever the outcome of our desire, we're still going to worship. Whatever's going on, he's still God, and we still love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might. And so she has a certain Desire. She is worshiping. Her worshiping is to get closer to Jesus. How her worship should be just to honor him and lift him up, not just to ask. I want to tell this story because it's one that resonates in my mind every time I think about this. I had a, a friend who, who, was, uh, who, was, who desired her to have a wife. He had prayed for it all the time. That's all. I mean, that was his prayer. Yes, he, he was serving Christ, and yes, he was saying he was doing all these things, but his prayer was, I want a wife, I want a wife, I want a wife, I want a wife, I want a wife. Wow. What did he want? Say, I know y'all knew. He thought he had the wife. Then she broke up with him. He quit going to church. He quit reading his Bible. He quit answering the phone. He didn't want nothing to do with God or nothing to do with church. It can happen in our life. I want to tell you, our worship should not be just to get. Our worship to be to give. I want to give honor. I want to give glory. My I will is, God, I am coming. Yes, you may have a request. Yes, God, I want to see how these things happen in my life. But when we focus on the things rather than the Savior and who he is and lifting him up, then our worship has changed. I know some people who, only, who, will, who, who want to serve God only for the benefit that they may get. Can I let you know? We need to watch our heart. Wow, see where her heart is. She was worshiping because in verse number 21, uh, she had a want. Her want was this in verse number 21. And she said, uh, and he said unto her, what wilt thou? And so uh, she said, Lord, you know my sons. Can y'all see her right now? You know my sons, Lord. Here they are. This is John. This is James. Jesus saying, yeah, I believe I knew that before you ever knew that. Lord, this is the greatest. I know you have 12 disciples, but these just stand out a little more. They just do a little more than the other ones, Lord. You know they do. I mean, you look at them, they shine it. Oh, Jesus. You know whenever all these other disciples are out, they're out playing. Them other disciples are out playing softball. You know, James and John, they're right there with you. And they, they, they are always with. They have got your back, Jesus. You can see this woman as she is so excited about the request she's about to make. And uh, so here's her request. Uh, Jesus, when you're sitting in your kingdom, when you are the king of this kingdom that you are setting up, say, how about, would you just let James sit on the right hand, John sit on the left hand, because they are the greatest disciples ever, and they're following you more than anybody else has ever followed you. So uh, Jesus... Would you just let them be just a little bit above the rest of them? You don't have to tell them. Just, you know, Jesus, they're your favorite anyway. Just let them sit on the right and sit on the left. 
Wow. How many times in our life do we forget that if it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd still be going to hell? Brother Jerry and I were talking before a service. How many times do we forget that if Jesus wouldn't have come by, we're not even worth wiping your feet on? We don't have nothing but sin. You think of the worst sinner you can think of and the worst sins you can think of in the whole wide world, and we are guilty of all of them. I want to tell you something. I don't deserve one thing. You say, oh, yes, yeah, she's just asking, and she was just asking. While well, she was saying, Lord, I know you love my boys, and so would you, would you just elevate my boys above everybody else? So Jesus, he answered her. Did y'all know that Jesus has an answer for everything? Look at somebody and say everything. There's not one thing that he does not answer in his word. And so he answers them, and he answers like this. Are y'all ready? He answers by giving an opportunity. I know you can't hardly see that, but he gives an opportunity. Oh, this opportunity is this. Look what he said in verse number 22. He said, I want to let you know something. He said here about James and about John in verse number 22. He said, oh, you don't have a clue what you ask. He said, do you think he looks at his disciples of James and John and he said, I want you to know something. Are you ready to die? Wow. Because here's what he said. I'm going to die. He's been telling them for three years. They're going to take this temple. It's going to be destroyed. But God's going to raise it up again in three days. How many of you know he did? Amen. He said, are you ready to give your life? And are you willing to give your life and be baptized with the baptism I am going to be baptized with of death for, for believing and knowing and trusting God's plan? Are you willing to give your life? You know that serving God will cost you something? The Bible says it like this and lets us know how the Apostle Paul, here's what Paul said. Paul said it like this. He said, I die daily. How often? You know what he had to do? Sometimes we gotta put we gotta put those old feelings to death. We got to say uh, to self, our old nature, I uh, know I am not going to follow you. I am a believer. I've trusted Jesus. He is my Savior. I am following Him. Say, so, yeah, but oh, it looks good over here. There's temptation here. There's all, yeah, you got to die to temptation. There has never been, how often? Never been a temptation that you and I have had that we could not withstand. I hear people say it all the time. They say, well, I'm just a sinner. And that's just, I, I just sin every day. Can I ask you a question? Why are you giving in to sin every day? Why are we giving in to sin? Somebody said it. We're saints. We're saved. We have the power of God in us. We have Jesus living in our life. You say, preacher, can you live uh, sinless? I want to tell you this. You can live holy. And the Word of God allows us to know, yes, we have this old sin for nature. Yes, uh, there may be thoughts come through your head. But I want to tell you what, there's birds fly over too, and I don't see anybody in here with a nest on your head. Amen? You do not have to follow temptation. And he, Jesus is saying to them, I want you to know something. You are going to have to die out to things in order to follow me. Wow. When you look at death, we come by sometimes and somebody has passed away and we say, they look beautiful. And they may have them looking beautiful. And it's for us, yes, it is that comfort but I want to tell you, they can't get up. They can't do anything. They can't move again. And we're like, wow, everything they have done in life is what begins to bloom out of their lives. And you know something in our life, if we reckon ourselves dead, uh, like the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number 6, uh, this old man is dead and my new life is in Christ. He's saying to these disciples, I want to let you know where you need to be. And that is in John 3 and verse number 30. He must increase and I must do what? 
decrease. I got to put this life to death. And then he said, I want you to know something. There's that devotion in verse number 23. As you look at verse number 23 at what Jesus said, he said, oh, look. He said, here it is. It's following after me. It is knowing me and trusting in me. He said, you shall indeed have this same baptism. Wow. James, we understand as he followed on with Christ, if I'm not badly mistaken, he was also, he was speared through and they, they took swords and, he, and his life was given for Christ. John, he was the beloved disciple in the book, in the gospel of John, and he's the only disciple uh, that, that died by natural causes because when they tried to martyr him, he still didn't die. Can I let y'all in on something? You ain't dying. Look at somebody and say, I'm living forever. Amen? Hey, you know, look at the person beside him and say, and if you're saved, we're going to have to put up with each other. Can I have an amen right there? In heaven, we're going to be together forever. They tried to crucify. They tried to boil John in oil. They put him in the oil, and Jesus just anointed him while he was there. And guess what? They put him on the Isle of Patmos. He did greater uh, than any of the disciples. He won Roman soldiers to Jesus. He, won, he, he continued on that journey. Jesus said, hey, you have to be devoted in service. So let me ask you a question. Would you be willing for 90 days? That's a long time. But for 90 days to say in a 90-day period, I will give myself to serve some, I will give myself to serve in the church, to serve someone, uh, to serve in some way for one hour each week of that 90 days. Not one hour a day, but just one hour, Lord, I'm going to serve you. God, if my service is coming out and picking up trash in the parking lot, Lord, I want to serve you. God, if I want to I serve you, Lord, by going in and, being, and visiting someone. God, I want to serve you by just singing a song or coming and praying for one hour every week. God, I just want to do something. I will serve. I want to tell you what God does. God changes our life forever when we serve. And when we follow him, it's that 90, uh, 90 days or even a year of one hour a week uh, for a whole year of saying, God, I want to serve you. I want to be uh, faithful to you. Uh, being as a Sunday school uh, class or a, or a small group or a Bible study saying, uh, for one hour in a week's time, uh, for the whole 90 days, we're going to find a place. We're going to serve together. We're going to do something together for the glory of God. Guess what? God will change our life through serving. Amen. There's that devotion when we think about what is going on. The Bible said there's that domination. In verse number 24, all the other disciples said, what did she just say? James and John, they're walking with us through everything that we're walking through. Why should they be elevated? Here's what the Bible says. Y'all ready for this? What says it? The Bible it says in Ephesians chapter number 4, we've already looked at it. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Can I tell you what was happening with the disciples? Satan was trying to get in uh, to the disciples or some of the disciples thought, hey, I know more about that than you do. I know more about Jesus than you do. I know more uh, about, about missions than you do. I know more about Sunday school than you do. I know more about these other things these other disciples said. Oh, no, you don't. We know the same Jesus. We're following the same Jesus. Amen. Y'all know we're supposed to be learning from each other, don't you? We're in this thing together. Oh, listen, don't let Satan uh, give that domination uh, spirit in our life of, uh, of wondering, why don't this person serve? Listen, if we will quit worrying about that other person and do what Jesus wants us to do, uh, we'll, just, we'll be a shining light to whatever darkness they may be in. Amen? I want to give you this as we close. There's that going forward. How do you go forward in life? How can I say, okay, Lord, I know what I need to do. I know how that I, I should go from I could, I might, I can, I should, uh, to I will serve. Because it seems so foreign sometimes. We think coming to church is serving God. No, coming to church is a place that we worship God. And then we serve. Oh, as we watch, here's what Jesus said to them. I love what Jesus did. Verse number 25 is awesome. Jesus gave James and John a time out. You ever heard of a time out before? If I had a time out, it was a whooping and then a time out. 
You was whooped, and then you couldn't do what you wanted to do. Amen? How many of you have ever got a whooping before? Just say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you have helped you out through life? Amen? When you look at what he's saying, he said, look, there's power. He said the Gentiles have power, yet they, don't, they, they can use that power to make other people serve. He said that's not what serving God is. God does not make robots. God gives people with a heart. He said, I want you to know, you can just choose to follow me. There's the power. But then, how we understand something, there's that position. He said, here's your position. He said, in order for you to be where you need to be, here's one thing you need to do. Just serve. You didn't come so that we can minister to you, James and John. You didn't come so that all the other ten disciples can say, Wow, oh yeah, John, what do you need? You need your shoes tied? I'm going to tie your shoes. Oh, I see you need your robe straightened up a little bit. You need an iron? I'm going to iron it for you. Jesus didn't say you came to serve them. He said we came for one purpose. He said, and that is to serve. Just to say, God, here I am. Is it not amazing? Whenever you just serve the Lord and you do something God has placed on your heart, what it does for your life. He said, oh, by the way, your position is this. If you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, be the servant to all. <laughs> just serve. Just love me enough to serve and love others. He said, here's, here's our purpose. I want you to look at it. If you don't get anything else, I want you to get verse number 28 before we go to Sunday school. I want you to look at it. Verse number 28 says, here is the purpose of of our serving look at verse number 28 even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life he's supposed to be given what his life a ransom for many so when you serve you're serving for the purpose of bringing people to know Jesus when I serve uh, God, and I, I'm being faithful to God. I want to tell you what happens in our life. It is that place where we uh, come to say, God, I'm serving you because I love you. And through that service, I know that you are shining a light so that someone can come to know you. He's the ransom for many. That word ransom means that he has paid for us. He died on a cross for our sins to save us. And so when we come at place of I will, we belong to a church that serves. We become a servant in that church. We become an example of somebody who serves. You know what we find out? Whenever we understand something about going forward, that it is time. It may not be time for our brother. It might not be time for our sister. But it's time for me, oh, Lord, to begin to serve and to follow you and realize, God, that you have given me this opportunity so that I can serve you. I will serve how when you understand what is going on and we how we read it right here in the back of this book if you read in page number 56 it says this there has been a slow but discernible change in many many of churches how we have retreated into self-serving shell and made a church mostly about us like what do we like what do we don't like I like Burger King have it your way amen Oh, it is time for us as, as believers to change and realize what God is doing. It's not a plug and play. How that here's what we do and this happens. How, but it's us being faithful and saying, God, I want you to do something in me. I will serve. How I many this morning as a believer, you say, God, I want to serve you. I don't know what all you want me to do. But God, I'm willing to ask you. And God, I'm willing to hear from you what can I do to serve? God, what can I do? How can I serve you? I will serve. As they come and prepare an invitation hymn, while we are thinking about where we are as a, as a believer, how much of my life is serving the Lord? How much serving am I doing? It's not calculating. It's not writing it down saying, oh, yes, I served that hour this week. But it's saying, God, I want to give you an hour. God, I want to give you my time. I want to serve you. I want to serve in what is going on. God, I just want to be faithful to you in serving you. You may be here this morning, and you've heard people talking. You heard Brother Jerry giving his testimony about knowing Jesus. You've looked at the Word and said, wow, I always want to put myself first instead of Christ first I, in my life. And I always want, I, in my life, my sin is bigger and better I, than, than what I'm trusting Christ for. And today in my life, 
while I realize I need to, I will follow Jesus. I will trust Him. I will serve. I will serve. I will be saved. I will trust Christ this morning. I want to ask you to stand all over the building with heads bowed and eyes closed for just a minute as we're just in the presence of the Lord this morning. How many would say it is time that I got my joy back by serving God? It is time that 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 place in my life that I fulfill what God would have for me. So this morning, while they sing, let's just say, you know something, I want to come this morning because I want to ask God. I want to pray. I just want to come this altar. I want to pray and ask God, God, what is it you want me to do? What, how do you want me to serve that one hour? God, in the week, Lord, what do you want me to do, Father? I just want to come ask you, God. I want to serve, and God, I want to know what you want me to do. While these are coming, while God is just speaking, you say, yes, I know I know Jesus, but I want to serve. I just want to be faithful. I want God to speak to me. I want to know what God would have for my life. You say this morning, Pastor, you know something? Brother Jerry was giving his testimony. I really don't know today if I'm saved. I don't know that I know Jesus in my life. I've been in church. Listen, you may have served in church. But I want to tell you, without knowing Jesus in your life, you're empty. Hey, I want to tell you, Jesus will change your life. He will give you life. You say this morning, Pastor, I need to come. I need Jesus in my life. Listen, would you come while these are praying, while God is just speaking? God, I need you in my life. Do you know Jesus this morning? Listen, do you have him in your heart? You say, Pastor, this morning I know without a doubt that if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. I know I'm saved. I know I know Jesus. I know that I know him. And I just want to praise him this morning for the day he reached down and saved me like he did James and John and the disciples. That, that they gave their heart. To, I know there's a place in my life I trusted Jesus. If you do, would you just slip your hand up, wave it to the Lord. God, you're good to me, and I just want to thank you for your salvation. If you know Jesus this morning, listen, would you just praise him? Hallelujah. God is so good. So this morning, Pastor, in my life today, wow, I know, I know Jesus, but I, I want to know what God wants me to do. I want to serve him. I want to commit today just to one hour a week. Lord, show me where I can serve you. God, show me what you want me to do and how you want me to do. God, I want to know it. If you want to do that, if you want to know him, would you just slip your hand up? God, I want to know what you want me to do. I want to serve you, God. I want to pull away from whatever I'm doing and just serve you for at least one hour. Hallelujah. God, I want to commit to you. Committing to be a servant. I will serve. You say this morning, Pastor, I'm really not sure. I know Jesus. And while these are praying this morning, God is speaking to my heart. God is dealing with my life. I'm really not sure today. I'm knowing Jesus. And if I died today, I'm not sure I'm ready to meet God. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm really not sure I know Jesus. Pray for me. Pray for me. Or you may say, you know something, Pastor, I've been out away from God. I'm not where I need to be with God. Pray for me. I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I need to be with God. Pray for me. Hallelujah. God bless your hearts. Thank you for being obedient to God. Thank you for being obedient to God. Listen, would you come this morning any others? Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you, God, this morning for being so good to us. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us, God, to come together to worship, to look in your word. And God, Lord, again, be reminded, God, of how we can just serve you. God, that joy comes from us as a believer, trusting you, believing you, and knowing in faith, God, I want to follow you. And Lord, in following you, God, to understand it's not about us, Lord, it's not about our desires, it's not about our will, God, but it's about you and what you can do and, th and can do in us and through us by simply being obedient and serving you. I will serve. God, I pray that we would understand, God, that we're committing to be a servant to say yes Lord God I pray with these right now that do not know you as Savior and Lord in this building this morning God I pray today even right now Lord they would ask you Lord Jesus I know I'm a sinner I, I believe you died for me on the cross and Jesus that you are the Son of God you are buried you rose again and today Jesus I ask you to forgive my sins come into my life Jesus Lord I need you and Lord I give my life to you I want to follow you Jesus hallelujah God, I pray with these right now, God, that we would just confess our sins before you. God, that we may be clean, may be a vessel, God, that can serve, to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul. And God, together right now, Lord, as those who may have just got saved, those right now, God, that just confess sin to you, God, all of us together right now, God, as we just say, Lord, show us. God, lead us to that place of service so that we can honor you and lift you up in everything we do, God. Lord, I pray that you, God, would open that door. You would speak to all of our hearts. Help us to know, God, that place of service. 
Oh, that we can honor you. God, we give you glory. God, we give you thanksgiving this morning for your blessings. We ask your will to be done in all of our lives. In the wonderful, precious, and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that one day Jesus came your way? Amen. Let's go serve him, worship him, honor him in everything we do. Invite somebody to the house of the Lord. Wednesday, Sunday night, Wednesday, and next Sunday, bring somebody with you. I want to tell you, God is good. Amen. Turn